Greetings, everybody. Turn your King James Bible to Isaiah chapter 40. As I've mentioned, Isaiah is similar to a mini Bible. It has 66 chapters, and the Bible has 66 books. The Old Testament has 39 books in the King James Bible. The Catholic Bible and the Hebrew Bible is a little bit different, but hey, we can live with that. But uh, chapter 40 of Isaiah corresponds to the beginning of the New Testament, which is the book of Matthew. So what I'm going to do is read from Isaiah, and then when I get to a topic, I'll skip over to the New Testament and then I'll go back to Isaiah. So keep your place in Isaiah chapter 40. Because you know what? The first 39 chapters of Isaiah, there's a lot of rebuke, a lot of judgment, a lot of wrath. But starting in Isaiah chapter 40, it's more of a, how would you say the Lord's grace and love and forgiveness so without further ado let's go isaiah chapter 40 and verse 1 comfort ye comfort ye my people saith your god speak ye comfortably to jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Okay. In Matthew 5 and verse 4, Jesus said, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And then in Matthew chapter 9, verse 20, And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole or healed. But Jesus turned him about and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Be of good comfort. Thy faith had made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that whole, uh, from that hour. So she was, she was healed, right? All right. So comfort, right? And it says, uh, verse 2, Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her, for uh, that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned. What's iniquity? Sin. For she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. So where do we read about our iniquity being pardoned? Let's take a look at Matthew 9, verse 1. And he, Jesus, and he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. Boy, those would uh, that would be some really good good things to hear, wouldn't it? From the Lord mouth of the Lord. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Now let's go to Matthew chapter one of verse eighteen. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, as husband and wife, right? Before they came together, 
she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately, privily. Um, he was going to divorce her privately so as not to embarrass her. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yeshua HaMashiach? Uh, no. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. You know, when I hear people using Yeshua, I'm thinking, you know, are these people actually denying the New Testament scriptures in English? You know, and yes, I know uh, Joshua is the sixth book in the Old Testament, and it does have reference to salvation, to as I know. But, you know, being that the New Testament was written in Greek, and Paul was sent to the Greeks, a bunch of cities in Greece, Corinthians, Ephesians, Colossians, they were all... Greek people in Greek cities in Greece, you know, so, but the thing is, for he shall save his people from their sins. Let's go to Isaiah 40 and verse 3. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness. Now, who's this talking about? John the Baptist. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. So where do we read about John? How about Matthew chapter 3, verse 1? In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. There's a big thing going on right now, or people will tell you that being uh, repent means to change your mind from unbelief to believing. But John the Baptist is not talking to unbelievers here, telling them to repent. He's talking to believers. And in uh, Revelation chapter 3, Jesus told the believing church, I believe it was Ephesus, he told the believing church to repent. Uh, so, was Jesus telling the believing church to repent of their unbelief? That don't make no sense. No, he's telling them to repent of their works, of their deeds. So, I mean, they weren't perfect. Uh, they were doing some good things, but not, not everything was perfect. So, And saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, the Greek rendering of Isaiah, uh, by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Okay, let's go back to Isaiah 40. Verse 3, The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway of our God, a highway for our God, Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, 
For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Huh. How about Revelation chapter 1, verse 5? And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and every eye shall see him. Now, there's people that are called preterists, and they'll tell you that the entire New Testament was all fulfilled in 70 AD when the Romans invaded uh, Jerusalem and destroyed the temple. Um... Okay, so did Jesus come with the clouds and did every eye see him? Well, I didn't see him. Have you? So either they're wrong or the Bible's wrong or, well, you know, maybe I was asleep when Jesus came. Yeah, and these fools, these idiots, these deceivers want you to think that this evil, wicked filth-ridden world is Christ's kingdom. Really? Yeah, they actually believe that crud. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. So, has this happened? Well, if it did, it was a secret rapture, because I missed it. All right, so, verse 5. And the glory, uh, Isaiah 40 and verse 5. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. The voice said, Cry. And he said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all the goodliness thereof, is as the flower of the field. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Do we see something in the New Testament? Yes. Why? Why is that not surprising to you? Oh, that's right. Yeah. You've listened to more than one of my studies, right? James chapter 1, verse 11. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. 1 Peter 1 and verse 24. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. Okay, back to Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 9. O Zion that bringeth good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem that bringeth good tidings, good tidings. That's like a good message. Lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up. Be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Do we have a parallel verse of this in the New Testament? Oh yeah, Matthew one twenty three. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is... God with us. You see, Emmanuel is Hebrew. And this is proof that the New Testament was in Greek because why would it say, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. 
because everybody that knew Hebrew would know Emmanuel means God with us. But that's why it says which being interpreted is God with us, because it was in Greek, and it's telling you what the Hebrew means. So when you get these Hebrew roots people telling you, well, you know, Matthew was in Hebrew, I don't think so. But what can I tell you? All I can tell you is every single so-called Messianic Jew that I have ever had interactions with has lied to me. Every single one of them. They have a very terrible batting average. I don't know about you people that uh, know about baseball, but uh, they got a, a zero batting average with me. Zero. So, not good. All right, so... All right, we just read about good tidings in uh, Isaiah chapter 40. Where do we read about this? Well, how about Luke chapter 2 and verse 8? And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings, good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Good tidings, people. All right, let's go to Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 10. Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule for them. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. Is there a parallel verse to this in the New Testament? Uh, let's see. I'm going to give you three guesses, and the first two don't count. Matthew 16, 27. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Luke 6, 23, Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy. Leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. Back to Isaiah verse 11. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. Oh boy. Am I going to have fun with this one? He shall gather the lambs with his arms and carry them in his bosom, and he shall gently lead those that are with young. All right. John 10 and verse 11. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. John 10, 14. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. Oh, yeah. How about 1 Peter 5, 4? And when the chief shepherd shall appear... Ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Huh. Boy, that's something, huh? Verse 12. Isaiah 40 and verse 12. Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and meted out heaven with the span, and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure? and weighed the mountains in scales, and the hills in a balance. Who hath directed the Spirit of the Lord, or being his counselor, hath taught him? Is there a parallel verse to this in the New Testament? Colossians 1 and verse 16. For by him, Jesus, for by him were all 
things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Do you know you were created by him for him? We were created for the glory of the Lord. Oh, yeah. All right, so let's see. Verse 13. Who hath directed the Spirit of the Lord, or being his counselor, hath taught him? With whom he took he, he counsel, with whom took he counsel, and who instructed him and taught him in the path of judgment, and taught him knowledge, and showed to him the way of understanding? And the answer to that question is no one. Because the Son of Man is the only begotten Son of God who has created everything. In John 14, 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance with whatsoever I have said unto you. John 15, 26, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. All right, Isaiah 40, verse 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very, uh, as a very little thing. Verse 16. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. To whom then will ye liken God, or what likeness will ye compare unto him? The workman melteth a graven image, and the goldsmith spreadeth it over with gold, and casteth silver chains." He that is so impoverished that he hath no oblation chooseth a tree that will not rot. He seeketh unto him a cunning workman to prepare a graven image that shall not that shall not be moved. Have ye not known? Have ye not heard? Hath it not been told you from the beginning? Have ye not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. Huh. So all you people that believe in the flat earth, I guess the earth is a pancake, right? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in, that bringeth the princes to nothing, that maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. Yea, they shall not be planted. Yea, they shall not be sown. Yea, their stock shall not take root in the earth. And he shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither, and the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. To whom then will ye liken me, or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high, and behold who hath created these things, that bringeth out their host by number, he calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might, for he, for that he is strong in power, not one falleth. Remember the Bible said that uh, even the hairs on your head are numbered. Keep that in mind. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with 
wings as eagles. They shall run and shall and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. All right, everybody, that's the end of Isaiah chapter 40. This is why a lot of these so-called Bible scholars think that Isaiah 40 and through verse 66, chapter 66, Isaiah chapter 40 through 66 is a different Isaiah than Isaiah chapter 1 through 39. But Isaiah roughly follows the, uh, the Bible, whereas uh, the 40th book in the Bible is the book of Matthew, the New Testament. So, all right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in the name of Jesus, in his precious name, amen.